Hey there, it's Heather with Jumping Spiders USA. Today we are going to be casting these uh, creepy crawlers in some resin. So before we get started, go ahead and find us on Facebook. You can do that at facebook.com slash groups slash Jumping Spiders USA. You can find a complete uh, care guide over there the Jumping Spider Guider Care Guide. Um, also, go ahead and give this video a like and share and subscribe and then click the little bell so you get all updates for um, all notifications for future content. But right now, I've got a couple uh, blue death feigning beetles, um, three jumping spiders in here. You can see a little teeny tiny one right there and a wolf spider that I found in the death curl in my living room the other day so I've been saving these for a few months you know they just they just die sometimes and I've been saving them so I could um do this project so let's get started and see what happens so what you're witnessing here is the bugs in a 70% alcohol solution um, isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and they are just, you know, preserving in this. They've been drying out for um, a long time, some of them for a couple months, and the reason I've got it in the alcohol is for further preservation, but also to make them um, flexible so that when I pin them uh, to the styrofoam that's next, that they are movable and the legs don't break off or anything. This is just part of the preservation process and making them flexible enough so that I can, you know, pin them. That's all uh, this is. So after the soaking, I soaked for a couple days to make sure they were nice and preserved and um, malleable and flexible. And then I started just pinning them into position on uh, pieces of styrofoam. This was very tedious and some of them required a lot of pinning to, you know, I use tweezers as well for this, tweezers and the pins to um, pull their legs out gently and pin them into place because you want them pinned into place and you want them to dry like that. Otherwise, when you put them in the resin, they're just gonna stay curled up or their limbs, um, if they're not dried in that position, they're going to roll up into whatever position um, the resin creates for them. So this is definitely um, a necessary step. You know, you 100% want them to dry out but you or they'll um, rot in the resin but you also want them to dry out in the position that you want them to be in or the resin will just you know draw them up or put them in um, an unnatural or not very good looking position so you know put them in the position that you want them in pin them like that and then dry them out so earlier I said that I'd been drying mine out for months and some of them I had been, but only because I was just saving them. I wasn't ready to do the resin yet, but you're gonna need to, it'll probably only take about two weeks. That's probably how long you'll want to dry them out. So next up in my process was um, drying flowers because I used flowers um, as well in my resin because I thought it'd be cute. So these are just uh, flower clippings from my yard. You know, we've got some creeping Jenny and some mint blossoms and fern, begonia, uh, manuka, um, a little succulent there. And then you, you just like the bugs, you have to dry these out because if you try to put them in the resin before they are dry, if there's any moisture, they're just gonna rot in the resin and they're not gonna look good. So they have to be dried out. And to do that, I used the Activa Flower Drying Art Silica Gel. I got this off of Amazon. I'll link to it down in the description. And you put some in a microwave safe container and then you put the flowers in there, none of the flowers touching each other, and then you pour some more silica, silica gel over it and you just you know follow the instructions on the container and then you um, 
you know, put it in the microwave with a cup of water. You don't put the cup of water into the silica gel. You just put a cup of water, just set it in the microwave. So there's like two containers in there, a cup of water and a bowl of um, flowers drying in silica gel. So it took about three, three and a half minutes or so to get um, them dry using the microwave method. You don't have to use the microwave or you don't even have to use silica gel at all. It just takes longer. Um, you could press them, you know, in a big thick book like a dictionary. There are many ways that you could um, dry the flowers. This is just how I did. And this is what they look like dried out. You know, you want to put them into, same as the bugs, you want to put them in the same position that you, you know, want to use um, after they're dried. So next up, we've got the actual casting the resin portion. So here we've got a cup and I've got this um, plastic knife to stir the resin and the catalyst this is this clear light casting resin. And um, on TAP's website, they sell the MEKP liquid catalyst that goes with the resin. So I've got this um, brush right here because after I dried the flowers with uh, silica gel in the microwave, you know, there's like still a little silica gel and I'll use the paint paintbrush to get that off. I've got tweezers to help position everything better in the resin. I've got um, silicone molds. I've got a mask because you will definitely need that because this resin is super duper industrial strong. I've got some gloves and I've got all these um, little flowers and leaves and things that I dried. My dog is out here barking. I'm going to take all the pins out. And you definitely want to make sure that you are doing the, that 30 minute between each um, layer. Otherwise, the bug will not stay in place. It won't stay in the position or in the place that you put it. It will actually end up um, floating somewhere else. Hey guys, it's Heather. So today is going to be the day that we finally... Uh, take this resin out of the molds and see what the heck it looks like. So I've left this in here for three days. Um, the video that uh, where I got this resin idea and this particular resin, the clear light casting resin, um, he did his for two days, but mine just seems kind of thick. And since I didn't know what the freak I was doing, I just left mine um, for three days. Uh, we are gonna um, take this resin out of the mold, out of the silicone molds, and see what happens. Um, I am outside, but I didn't leave these outside. I poured them outside, and then I left them the first night outside, and then I brought them in the house uh, the next day, and then I'm just, you know, taking them out of the molds again outside. But I left them inside the rest of the time. Thing about that I can say is that um, even though the resin you know has already mixed and it's not even like forming the reaction you know from the catalyst and the resin anymore it still smells like my house smelled chemically um, it's it still smells like it right now so that 
is a factor. This stuff is pretty potent and um, even when it's curing and hard, it still uh, smells. So maybe take that into uh, consideration. <laughs> take this one out first this one is just um where's the camera at there we are this one is just oh all right then all right but that's what we got uh so maybe be careful when taking it out all right so for the next one i'm just where's this camera i'm just gonna uh do it even more carefully looks pretty cool can you even see this i don't know this freaking video a beetle a blue death fainting beetle all right beetle number two bubble thing on his butt he's a bubble butt placement is really good in here i had a lot i had high hopes for these bigger ones this is how this one turned out it's got that rippling on the side and again i'm not like super sure how i could have not made that happen like this you know over here is like perfectly clean and clear and then it's on like one side it's got kind of got that like rippling on it not sure and then around her abdomen um she's kind of got you know like you see that like grayish whitish color that's kind of like some bubblies there like you know kind of her abdomen looked like it trapped some air a little bit but otherwise um she looks pretty good i'm pretty uh happy with this one i super love wolf spiders like i think my love of spiders really started when i was in um seventh grade and Oh, wow. Wow, I'm impressed. Okay, I actually like this. Um, my love of spiders kind of started when I was in seventh grade. And I had this, um, I don't know, can you see this well? And I had this, uh, I found this wolf spider and i preserved her in alcohol and pinned her and i took her in um for science and my science teacher he was just he was impressed um and he just impressed upon me that it, you know it wasn't weird and um i think that's where my love of spiders kind of started